He does not come at a random time. There are things that precede him that are not just signs, but that make the environment for deception that much more fertile and make the hearts and the minds and the vision more susceptible to being deceived. And that's where this hadith where the Prophet said from Anas ibn Malik and pay attention to the wording. You know, sometimes subhanAllah, we read through these things so fast and every word, you've got to pause and think. You know, I never thought about the way the Prophet placed it here. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna amama dajjal sinin khadda'a the Prophet ﷺ said, before Dajjal comes, there are years of deception. Before this false messiah comes, there are years of false messiahs and deceptive tactics. Years of false deception. Years of these things happening. Right? The world changes in a way that it sort of sets the ground. It sets the stage for a Dajjal. And what happens in those years of deception? The Prophet ﷺ said, يُكَذَّبُ فِيهَا الصَّادِقِ That a truthful person is called a liar. وَيُصَدَّقُ فِيهَا الْكَاذِبِ And the liar is considered to be truthful. Why? Because the liar is good at deceiving and covering his lie, whereas the truthful, and this is something very profound, a person who is truthful will not resort to deception to prove their trustworthiness. Right? And so what's going to happen? They're just going to have to take it on the chin. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. Because a kathib will do whatever it takes to portray sitq. Whereas a sadiq is comfortable, a truthful person is comfortable with just being a truthful person. Right? So that's what happens first. Then the Prophet ﷺ said uh, that, the, the, that the trustworthy people are discredited. People of amana are considered to be discredited. And those who are treacherous are trusted. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَيَتَكَلَّمُ فِيهَا الرُّوَيْبِضَ He said وسلم, that at that time the most disgraceful of people speak. Their voices are projected. So people can't distinguish truth from falsehood anymore. They can't distinguish trustworthy people from dishonest people anymore. And because of that, who's going to take the stage? Right? And the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who are they? SubhanAllah, the way he described them, he said, al fuwaisiq little fusak, little men, little men, SubhanAllah, little people, little wicked people. But at the same time, they speak about affairs, all types of affairs and all types of things they have no business talking about. And they cause all types of issues for people. This is what precedes a dajjal So this is what's important to understand here. The world prior to him is a world where realities are distorted. Realities are distorted. And people seek to create their own paradise on earth. Our sensibilities are, are lost and our fitrah is compromised. Our natural goodness and inclination is compromised. And so people operate in a day and age prior to a Dajjal in vanity and they can't see past their immediate surface level vision. And as people become shallower, the tools to distort shallow realities become more advanced. So people can't see beyond the movies and the graphics and the, and, and, and the tactics and that stuff right in front of them. They can't see beyond that. But at the same time, they trust it more. <laughs> and the, the tools by which you can distort all of that are becoming more advanced. And so you have the situation where if that shallow reality doesn't immediately satisfy me, and this is how it affects faith, then I deny it. So that's why you see people deny faith in the name of rationality. Now, not that Islam is not an intellectual faith. Islam is an intellectual faith. Use your senses. Use your brain. But then people treat their senses as divine, even though those senses are being constantly compromised. And if I can't see it immediately in front of me, then I'm not going to believe in it. So... At, you know, when people talk about faith and they talk about Jannah and they talk about Nar and they talk about Akhirah, the hereafter and they talk about the unseen and all that stuff I can't see it right in front of me and even though I don't even know what I'm seeing anymore <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me because I can't see it right in front of me and subhanAllah, ironically those who deny the existence of a Dajjal you know, in the name of some enlightenment those who deny the existence of a Dajjal in the name of no visual evidence they're displaying the very weakness that makes them more likely to fall for his visual distortions. 
I can't see it. I don't believe it. Where is this Dajjal now? Oh, really? Dajjal sounds funny. You know? And so people that start to deny it, why? Because I can't find it now. I don't see it now. They trust their vision so much that they're most likely to fall victim to their vision when the actual Dajjal rises. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his fitna. Allahumma ameen. Where do I want to get to with this, inshaAllah ta'ala? And what do I want us to really take home and think about? Dajjal himself, this false messiah, he knows he's an imposter. And he sees things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause him to see things that put him in his place. The Prophet sallallahu said, al Madina. يَأْتِيهَا الدَّجَّالِ فَيَجِدُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ when, when, when Dajjal comes to Medina, he would see the angels standing in front of al Madina, holding their armor, and he would not come anywhere near them. The Prophet ﷺ said, when a Dajjal sees Isa السلام, the actual Messiah, Jesus peace be upon him, when he sees Isa السلام, he literally starts to dissolve and run, melts and flees away from him because he knows he's an imposter. And he knows that his time has come. But there's something that I want to get to that is beyond that, which is, you know, when Dajjal is presenting all of these different things to people, a virtual reality that you can step into that will completely take you to where you want to go, right? He's presenting to you the dead. He cooperates with the shayateen so that the shayateen would take the image, would take the vision of a person who has passed away that believes in him and that affirms him. And he's creating all of, this, all of this deception. There's something very specific that I want to get to, and that is when Dajjal actually presents his Jannah. This is something, subhanAllah, that just caught me, and I just couldn't stop thinking about it. When Dajjal presents his Jannah and says, enter into my Jannah, go ahead and enter into my paradise. And there's something of his magic, subhanAllah, and these, these tricks and this deception that speaks to a weakness that grows beyond, within us as well, that's not just about the tools, but also about the search for instant gratification, an inability that we're developing to see past surface level, where people in general try to recreate themselves and their universe to fit their desires, and they don't think about the long-term consequences, they don't think about ethics, they don't think about what this is going to mean. So then what happens when this Dajjal presents his Jannah and says, here, you can escape. You can enter into this. And you'll have everything that you want. And you don't have to wait for anything. Just go ahead and step in. And I think about, and may Allah protect us. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to seek protection. I think about people and the mindsets of people as they take that step in. Right? And what's going through their minds? Is it that they're so convinced that he is indeed God? Is it that what's the worth of this life anyway? You know, somehow I remember watching the, uh, some interviews with those that are uh, going to Mars at this point where, you know, or, or signing themselves up, enlisting themselves, knowing that it's a very risky mission. But I remember one of them saying, you know, if I die, then it's better than being in this world anyway. I thought, wow. He literally listed out the options. Like, that's how he did the math. He said, you know, I either make it to Mars or I die or I stay in this world. And he said, staying in this world is option number three for me. So I, I take option number two anyway over option number one. You gotta think about that. Like what world nurtures that, right? Where people try to recreate themselves and recreate their perfect world. And someone that might say, you know what? I don't care, I'll step in anyway. What's the worst that could possibly happen? What's the worst that could possibly happen? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he comes with Al-Jannah uh, or not al-Jannah itself, the likeness of paradise, the appearance of a paradise. And he said that his Jannah is actually 